All right, it's Barry, and today on Grow It, I've got everything you need to know about feeding your tomato plants, and I'm also finally starting my big plant food experiment for this year. So if you didn't know already, on my first video on the channel this time last year, I set up a bit of an experiment with three tomato plants where I fed them different plant foods throughout the whole growing season to see which one was the best for growing more tomatoes. I fed one of the plants tomato food, one of the plants was just fed on all-purpose plant food, and the third one was just given plain water and no food at all. I did updates on the plants all through the year, and in the end it turned out that the all-purpose plant food was the winner with the most tomatoes by weight. Now, there's a couple of different things that I really want wanted to improve on after last year to make things a bit more accurate. For example, last year I just had the three plants in one grow bag which means that the roots weren't isolated from each other and it was possible that even though the two plants were separated by the plain water plant in the middle, they most likely had roots growing all over the place. And I really wanted to make sure to remove that variability entirely this year so rather than using grow bags I'm going to be growing each plant in a pot on its own. Another thing that I really wanted to change was the way that I recorded the tomato quantity. Last year I just recorded them by the weight of the tomatoes from each plant, but that doesn't really tell the full story. It could have been that one plant food encouraged more tomatoes that were smaller in size, or it could have been the opposite with fewer, larger tomatoes. So this year, to make sure that the results of the tomato quantity are a bit more accurate, I'm going to weigh each individual tomato so that we have a total number of tomatoes per plant, the total weight and the average size of the tomatoes as well. And I've got a lot more types of plant food to test this year too. In today's video, I've got an introduction to fertilizers. So that you know what they are, how they work and all of the different types that there are because there's no shortage of different plant foods to choose from. And then I'll show you how to grow your tomato plants in a grow bag. I've got three plants here that I'm going to be sticking into a grow bag today just to show you how to plant them and feed them. And then I'm going to set up the experiment for this year and go through each of the fertilizers that I'm going to be testing. Before I get going with all of that, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with all my videos, including all of the updates on today's experiment and those all important results later on in the year. And if you're going to be growing your own tomato plants this year, check out all of my tomato videos, including my top five favorite tomatoes to grow, how to grow tomatoes from seed, and how to grow them from tomato slices, and there's loads more. First up today, I've got an introduction to fertilizers so that no matter which plant food you decide to give to your plants, you know exactly what they contain, what they do, and more importantly, you'll be able to decide which type is the most appropriate for your plants depending on what you want to achieve. There's loads and loads of different types of fertilizer and they can be made naturally or artificially. When it comes to growing plants at home, either for decoration or for eating, the reason we use fertilizers is to maintain a supply of the three macronutrients that plants require for growth, which are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. You'll often see these referred to as NPK fertilizers, which is just the chemical symbols for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And there's usually a number on there too, just to let you know how much of each one of them there is in there as a percentage. Fertilizers also have different methods of application. There's liquid, powdered, crystallized, slow release fertilizers, and just the traditional top dressings like manures and composts, which were the original organic sources of fertilization, along with crop rotation and the byproducts from the fishing and meat industries in the form of fish blood and bone meal. It was actually quite some time ago in the 19th century when the first artificial fertilizers were developed, which had a huge impact on agriculture and global food production. And that allowed for larger and stronger growing plants with larger yields. During the 20th century, advances in nitrogen fixing and production caused a massive increase in the use of nitrogen fertilization, and that was known as the Green Revolution. The large use of artificial fertilizers in agriculture is actually really bad for the environment, and that's because of things like runoff from fields, which causes waterway contamination and ocean dead zones, and there's also a significant contribution to climate change. I'm not going into all of that today, but you can make your own decision on which fertilizers are the most suitable for you at home in terms of natural or organic feeding. Going back to the three main components of a fertilizer, you have nitrogen, which promotes leaf growth, in turn increasing the photosynthetic capability of the plant. You've got phosphorus, which promotes the development of the roots, the flowers, the seeds and the fruits. And then finally, you've got potassium, which also promotes flower and fruit development, but it also improves the transport systems within the plant, improving its overall health. 
lot of fertilizers include a variety of other macro and micronutrients with additional benefits for your plants such as calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, copper and loads of others. Nitrogen is a really important nutrient for plants but despite nitrogen forming most of the earth's atmosphere plants can't actually use atmospheric nitrogen. It needs to be in a form that they can use and sometimes that's referred to as having been fixed. You hear of nitrogen fixing with things like peas and beans because they have symbiotic relationships with bacteria in the soil that form parts of the root systems which convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia that the plant can then use by absorbing it. For more information on nitrogen fixing and how you can use these plants to fertilize your soil organically check out my guide to using green manures which I'll leave a link to in the description and let's get a couple of tomato plants into a grow bag and I'll show you how to feed them. I'm just at the greenhouse staging now and I've got an absolute ton of tomato plants growing this year and most of these are going to be growing in grow bags in the polytunnel and I'll probably keep some in here as well just with the ones that I'm potting up for the experiment. As you can see I've got three plants there that are quite a bit bigger than the others. They're the money maker tomatoes. I'm going to get those in a grow bag in the polytunnel to give them plenty of growing space. Here we are. So I've got a regular grow bag here and if I flip this over sometimes they'll have a template printed on the back of the bag so that you can easily space out your plants by just cutting out the squares. Three plants per grow bag is perfect for most tomato varieties and things like pepper plants or cucumbers as well. But before I cut these out I need to smush up all of the compost inside as these are usually compressed to make them easier to store and transport. All that I need to do is stick it on its side and push down to break it all up. Then I'll just give it a bit of a roll until you can feel that it's all broken up inside. And you'll even notice that the grow bag ends up all poofy and squishy just like a pillow. It's a good idea to put it wherever you want to keep it now before you cut the squares out just so that it doesn't split and dump soil everywhere. Cut the squares out and just bin those. And now just have a rummage around inside and break up any of the leftover bits of compressed compost. All you need to do now is stick each of your tomato plants into their own square, make a hole for the plant to go in and then just fill it in around it and press it in. Grow bags are usually enriched with fertilizers so you don't always need to feed your plants for the first month or so but I'll feed these with some tomato food today just to show you how to do it. I'll be giving these some normal tomato food and I won't go into detail on it just now because I've got all of the details on the types of fertilizer later on in the video. Just while these are young plants and the grow bag is already enriched with fertilizer, I'm just going to be giving each plant around a litre and a half of water with the plant food in at half strength, which is 10 millilitres per four and a half litres. And I've already got that measured out here in my watering can and I'm just going to be sticking the food into there. Give it a mix around and then just water all around the plants, avoiding the leaves and the stem. That's those done and you only need to feed the plants in grow bags every other week until they get bigger and start to grow flowers and fruit and then increase it to every week. Now it's time to get this year's experiment underway. I'm going to be growing all the plants for the experiment in the main greenhouse in some big pots and I've got one for each plant to make sure that each plant is isolated and then we can accurately track the results of each fertilizer. I changed my mind a few times about the tomato variety to use for the experiment this year. I used money makers last year and they were great and then I thought it would be good to use beef tomatoes because of the size variability of the fruit but I've decided to go with Gardener's Delight for this year's variety just because they produced tons of tomatoes for me last year and they were a really easy variety to get hold of just in case you wanted to try growing them for yourself. I'm going to be growing eight plants for the experiment this year which should give us some real variety in the results and I can't wait to see what happens so let's get going. I've got five plants to pot up here and then three to do later so I'll quickly blast those in now.
as with last year I'm going to be growing a plant that only gets plain water so that we have a real measure of the effect of all the fertilizers in general we'll be able to compare the average size and quantity of tomatoes between fertilized and non-fertilized plants I'm just using the same grow bags for these um, I've opened them up and tipped them out because it's really nice soil and these are cheaper by volume than buying big bags of compost and all that's left now is to just give them a watering of course this soil is enriched with natural fertilizers so all these plants will be in the same conditions to start off with in terms of soil nutrition Next up I've got the reigning champion plant food from last year's experiment which is miracle Grow's all-purpose plant food. This plant food contains 7% nitrogen, 3% phosphorus and 5% potassium. So it's really good for green growth which is great for early development. I'll be doing all of the food at half strength for the first month until these plants are a bit bigger. So it's a quarter of a cap to a litre of water. Number three is a standard tomato food which nearly always comes in a red bottle and this particular one is Levington Tomorite and it's a bit dirty from the time I christened the polytunnel with it uh, but the nutrient percentages on this are a bit different there's 4% nitrogen, 1.3% phosphorus and 6.6% .6 potassium so it's lower nitrogen and much lower phosphorus compared to the all-purpose food this is to encourage fruit growth over leaf growth you wouldn't want to use this on leafy vegetables for that reason. They wouldn't do any harm, but you'd be better off with a high nitrogen food instead. This is quite a strong concentration, so it only takes 20 mils per 4.5 litres of water at full strength, so it's only 1 mil per half litre at half strength, which isn't very much at all. Now I've got all of those out of the way, it's time for the new additions for this year. I'll start off with the first powdered fertilizers that I'm going to be trying, and that is bone meal. This is one to avoid if you're a vegan and would rather avoid using animal products, as bone meal is primarily made up of animal bones and byproducts, as the name suggests. Bone meal is another contrasting product to the other two, as it's much higher in phosphorus, which is great for encouraging root development. This is bone meal from Doff, and this has uh, the instructions for pre planting on the box. And I'll just follow those, which is why you'll notice that the plant isn't already in the pot. This contains 4.5% nitrogen and 17.1% phosphorus, with no quantity for potassium on the box. You can see that this is over five times more phosphorus than the all purpose, and like 15 times more than the tomato food. As per the instructions, I'll add 75 grams of this stuff and mix it into the soil, and then I'll put the plant in and give it a good watering. It's important not to use this if you have dogs or other animals in your garden as they will be attracted to bone meal and they will eat it along with the soil as well. It actually smells a lot like dog biscuits. Number five is an Asda own brand concentrated fruit and vegetable food, which again is a liquid fertilizer that just needs adding to water. This is at a similar concentration to the tomato food, so 20 mils goes into 4 litres of water, and the bottle says that 4 litres made up is enough for 3 tomato plants. Again, I'll do this at half strength at first, so just over 1 mil is enough to do half a litre. This plant food contains 5% nitrogen, 5% phosphorus, and 5% potassium. So it's really just a general all-rounder with no specific boosted nutrients, it just has a bit of everything. Next is another powdered fertiliser which is similar to the bone meal, it's fish, blood and bone and it's an own brand job from the UK hardware store Wilco. Again, as the name suggests, it's just made from the byproducts of animals and in this case it's fish which is rendered into a powdered fertiliser. The instructions on this suggest that it takes 70 grams per square metre well mixed in with the soil, so I'll do that now and I'll stick the plant straight in. This is 5% nitrogen, 5% phosphorus and 6% potassium, so this is closer to the fruit and veg liquid food and it's more of a general purpose plant food. It'll be interesting to see how this compares to the standard bone meal. The last of the new fertilizers that I've got for this year is a popular one for tomato growers and it's liquid seaweed. This one boasts to be organic and natural and it's a good option if they factor into your selection. This is from Doff again and this advises not to store it at above 30 degrees C so don't keep it in your greenhouse. I'd say that for the other liquid ones too, just keep them under the sink or in the shed or something. 
This bottle recommends 50 millilitres or one full cap to four and a half litres of water as a root drench for smaller plants or seedlings. So I need a quarter of a cap to make up a litre and once the plants are bigger this also doubles up as a foliar spray so every week the leaves need a good soaking with a spray made up of this at the same concentration before and after flowering. There's no MPK content on the label for this one unfortunately but I think they're actually quite low compared to the other fertilizers and the difference is that this is made from essentially broken down plants so the nutrients are more readily available to be absorbed by the plant. And the final plant is hopefully going to be the mega plant as this one is going to be getting a selection of all the other fertilizers at different stages of development. First off, I'm going to give it the bone meal treatment. I'm going to mix the 75 grams of bone meal into the compost and then get the tomato plant potted up. This is the high phosphorus fertilizer, which is especially good for promoting root growth. Strong roots means a bigger, stronger plant. Then I'll be giving it a root soak with the seaweed at the recommended dosage for small plants. From the next feed onwards, I'm going to be feeding this plant with the Miracle Grow All Purpose, which is the high nitrogen fertilizer ideal for leaf and stem growth. And then once it's time to start flowering, I'll switch to the high potassium tomato food to encourage fruit growth as well. I'll also give them a weekly foliar spray with the seaweed mixture. So all of that should tailor the levels of nutrient delivery to the times when the plant needs them the most. And here we are, they're all in the greenhouse now. I'm gonna stick them all over here just while I've got the other stuff growing on the other side for now. And the best part about them being in these pots is that I can just move them straight over to the other window once all that stuff's out of the way. So they are ready to go and we'll see how they get on. And that is all of those done and ready to grow. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how each of those different plant foods affects the growth of each plant. And most importantly, the amount of tomatoes that each one produces. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to make sure that you get all of the updates on these plants throughout the growing season. And of course, the results at the end when we find out which one of these fertilizers is the best. I'll also post regular updates in the community tab, which will show up on your subscription feed too. So let me know in the comments section, which one of these you think is gonna be the winner this year. And it'll be great to see what you think and I'll see you next time.